All right. Thank you. I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of its members is present, that this meeting is duly, has been duly called, and that the notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with Texas Open Meeting Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The time is 6 o'clock. Item 1, invocation, Mr. Husbands. Ladies and gentlemen, if you care to, please join me in prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you've bestowed on us. We know we're not deserving, but we're thankful for each and every one of them. We're thankful for the wonderful kids in this district. Thank you, thank you for the parents that support those children. We thank you for the educators and administrators that help each and every child each and every day. Father, uh, we come to you tonight knowing that many in our family tonight, the CISD family, are hurting. Father, we uh, ask your special blessing upon the families that have lost loved ones. And Father, we ask that you comfort them and heal them and swage their anger to the best the best for them. Father, we, we, we hold those people near and dear in our hearts tonight and ask your continued blessings on them. Now be with each of us as we conduct this meeting. Help us to be respectful in all that we do and that everything we say or do be an honor to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Husband. All right. Please remain standing. Our presentation of colors and our, our U.S. and Texas uh, pledges will be given today by Caney Creek High School Navy JROTC. Our color guard tonight is our right rifle, Jacob Sterner. Our American flag is Johnson Vanderhurst. The Texas flag is Mateo Padilla. And our left rifle is Mickey Zavala. And it's led by Chief uh, Donald Arms. And our pledge today is going to be given by our Milam Elementary students, uh, Arthur Washington and Karis Downs. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one indivisible. Outstanding job. Thank you, Mr. Husband, Mr. <coughs> Mr. Huber. And of course, outstanding job as always from our junior ROTC. Uh, <laughs> item two, awards and recognition. Special district recognition, uh, 2A, 2008-2009 UIL state congressional debate champion, Mr. Ian McPherson, uh, the Williams High School. Mr. Kidd. Yeah. Um, we'll ask Dr. Landry to come forward, please, and introduce our state champion. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, Dr. Noel, thank you very much for this opportunity to come before you tonight um, to recognize a, a truly fantastic young man. Um, winning any, any state championship, you know, is exceedingly difficult. Um, winning one in state Congress debate is, is very, very rare. In fact, I don't think I've ever met a state champion uh, Congress debater uh, until now. Um, so it is with, uh, with a great deal of, of pleasure and my privilege to uh, introduce you to the Woodlands High School speech and debate coach, uh, Mr. Colin Gill, and he will introduce you to our state champion. President Williams, members of the board, Dr. Noll, it's an honor and a privilege to be here today. 
Uh, speech and debate is an activity uh, that develops critical thinking skills, a community-oriented mindset, and a problem-solving attitude that often tries to help students not just understand our world, uh, but better understand how they can work to change it. I feel fortunate every day to get to be the coach of the Woodlands High School speech and debate team. Uh, occasionally, if you're lucky, a student finds their way onto your team who embodies what it means to be a debater. They ask more of themselves in their world, demand action and change where they see a need. They never settle and they never grow comfortable with the status quo in themselves, in their community, or in their country. It is my honor to introduce you today to who that student is for me, Ian McPherson, my debate club president. This January, Ian attended the UIL Congressional Debate State Championship in Austin, Texas. And to prepare for this event, he spent hundreds of hours writing congressional legislation and competing at local competitions around Houston. Legislation that students use for competition mimics bills and resolutions that you will see on our actual congressional floor, like single-payer health care systems, Cuban and North Korean trade policies, and infrastructure development of our schools here, which I find quite fitting. After three days of competition, over 18 grueling hours in six different rooms, with 24 competitive students who were equally hungry to win the state championship, and state representatives walking in and out to listen to the next generation of political leaders, Ian walked away the UIL state champion in 6A congressional debate. I have here today a letter from the U.S. Representative Kevin Brady, who had the opportunity to watch Ian debate in the Super Congress final that took place in the Austin Capitol. He says, Dear Ian, I write to congratulate you on your victory at the 2019 UIL State Congress meet. Your dedication and hard work these past four years at the Woodlands High School have been duly rewarded. The work ethic and debate skills you cultivated will only continue to grant you success. Once again, I join your family and friends in congratulating you on this prestigious victory. Sincerely, Kevin Brady, U.S. Representative, 8th District of Texas. I believe that no debater can truly be successful without an effort for many people in their lives. Ian is here today with two of those people, his mother Dana and his father Dean, who I also believe deserve special recognition for their constant emotional, financial, and physical support of their son's goals. Additionally, I would like to thank you, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll, for your constant support of our students, faculty, and families in this community, and your desire to make real Conroe ISD's commitment that all means all. It's a privilege to be recognized here today, and it's my honor to officially present to you Ian McPherson, UIL Congressional Debate Champion for 2019. Ian, I can't tell you how proud we are as a board. Uh, I, I was blessed to meet the McPherson family three or four years ago, and, uh, and Ian, and have been watching him and uh, watching his accomplishments, and you have made the, the board so proud. Um, you know, debate. Um, debate is when people offer different sides, different positions, Sometimes it can, yes, an attorney, sometimes it can be very zealous. Uh, but what I have just heard about you, what I've observed about you, I, what I think is so important is when you do debate and when you do present opposing sides, you do that with respect, you do that with professionalism, you do that, you know, you can argue as hard as you can, but when you shake hands and walk away, that's what it's all about. So keep that integrity. I know you learned that from your from your mom and dad and from your your family, and uh, it's just our honor to give you this award and just know how how proud the district is of you. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Thank you.
That's a big deal. Big deal. Big deal. Yeah. All right. Great job. It just shows how diverse our district is. We're accustomed to seeing <laughs> swim and football, lacrosse, and so forth. Now we got debate, so we just add to their repertoire. Great job, guys. Outstanding. Well-rounded all the way around. Um, item 2B, special district recognition, Haney Creek High School, Feeder Zone. Dr. Well, we Dr. are Noel. excited tonight to celebrate the Panthers of the Caney Creek Feeder Zone, and I know that uh, as you all walked in tonight, you, you were able to enjoy the drum line that was performing outside and see the great robotics set up and um, just wonderful door greeters. Uh, they were fantastic, <laughs> very energetic, and um, it's a celebration tonight of the Caney Creek Feeder, and we're excited about that. We're going to start off our celebration with a video. So we'll like Lock, pull that up. Here in the Caney Creek Feeder Zone, we strive to create the sense of community between our schools and the towns that make up our section of Conroe ISD. Through educating the leaders of tomorrow. Through providing services to the community. Through community events. Through lending a helping hand. Through learning from our community leaders. Through our understanding of what makes our community great. Here are a few more examples of how each of the schools of the Caney Creek Feeder Zone continue to build a sense of community each day. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to show you how the Caney Creek Feeder Zone is building a community as part of Conroe ISD. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, Dr. Noll. Um, it's a great pleasure for me to be able to stand here tonight have the chance to recognize the Caney Creek Feeder Zone. We have a great group of educators, administrators, obviously students and parents who work very hard to develop a sense of community along with their main job of educating our students. And one thing I want to do before I continue is recognize all Caney Creek alumni, parents, students, educators. If, if you're in our Caney Creek Feeder Zone in here, could you please stand up tonight? Thank you so much. I, I would also like to introduce our feeder principals to you. This is an amazing group of educators that have such a passion to see students be successful, and I'm blessed to be able to work with them. So first, Dr. Serena Pearson from Austin Elementary. <laughs> Ms. Jenny Watson, Creighton Elementary. Mr. Gilberto Lozano, Milam Elementary. <laughs> Ms. Jamie Allman, San Jacinto Elementary. <laughs> Ms. Karen Jones, Grangerland Intermediate. <laughs> Ms. 
and Mr. Robert Garcia from Moorhead Junior High. Thank you so much for all you do. God bless you. Mr. Lozano, was it? Very nice to meet you. God bless you. Thank you so much for all you do. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. We have a lot of things we want to talk to you about tonight in a short amount of time. Uh, some really cool things. First thing I want to do, though, is talk about something we have at Caney Creek High School. And it's we have some unique programs, not just in our district, but even throughout the state. And one of those is our meats processing lab. And there's only actually three high schools in the entire state of Texas that have a meats processing lab. We are one of those. And I would like to invite two of my students up to talk to you a little bit about that at this time. That's Kendall Lewis and Catherine Amaya. Good evening. I'm Kendall Lewis, a junior at Candy Creek High School. And here with me today is Catherine Amaya. The food processing class has opened a wide range of opportunities for me. There is a strong need in the meat processing industry so that consumers such as yourself can go to the grocery store and pick up products like 80-20 hamburger meat, pork chops, and a variety of others at your convenience without performing the process of fabrication. In our meats processing class and lab, we have learned to process, package, and sell different varieties of meat products. This year, we have processed pork, which we turned into sausages, which was then sold to staff on campus. We have also um, cut different types of steaks and roasts as well. As we have learned to calculate yield and quality grade, we have the opportunity to work with the community and learn customer service skills by processing wild game like white-tailed deer, elk, axes for individuals for these consumer products like smoked sausage, snack sticks, summer sausage, pan sausage, fresh sausage, bacon wrap, backstrap, jerky, basically anything they desire. <laughs> As a Anybody student, else? this class has shown me the proper process, producing animals into different cuts, working with public as well, the role of agriculture plans in feeding our world. This class has given me the skills that I can utilize in my daily life as well as have a career in a high demand career field with the corporations <laughs> such as Tyson and Maddox. Thank you for supporting the food processing program at Candy Creek High School. We have brought each of you some samples of the meat products we have produced in our food processing class. We hope you enjoy the snack sticks and beef jerky. Have a great evening. All right. That's so generous of you. Good evening, Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Mississippi, we say that's good eating. That's good eating. <laughs> so look forward to it. President Williams, <laughs> members of the board, Dr. Knoll, uh, I'd like to introduce a teacher uh, who took the time to research and then, with the support of her team, took the initiative to implement a Project Lit chapter on our campus. Project Lit, since it's been implemented, has been embraced by all students and all staff at Moorhead Junior High. Uh, it's my honor to introduce Sarah Pritchett. She is a teacher who takes initiative. She is a leader. She's passionate about the subject she teaches, and she's passionate and loves uh, the students she teaches. So again, all right. Sarah. Uh, good evening, um, President Williams, um, the board, Dr. Knoll. I'm a little nervous. You would think I wouldn't be in front of kids all day. I teach 120 kids all day, but this made me nervous. They made me practice on them today, too, by the way. <laughs> Some of them are here tonight. If y'all would come up and join me, I would really appreciate it, because they, I, need some, I need some backup singers. So, 
Okay. Um, I'm one of the eighth grade teachers at Moorhead Junior High, and it's my honor to share with you what I've learned about Project Lit and what I've brought to our community. Come on over, guys. In the fall of 2016, uh, Mr. Jared Amato, an ELA teacher at um, Maple High in Nashville, Tennessee, started the Project Lit community on his campus to increase high quality, culturally relevant books inside and outside the classroom. His goal was to promote a love of reading, not only in his school, but in his community. After seeing soaring success and increased student involvement, Mr. Amato decided to partner with dedicated teachers and students across the nation. He reached out via social media. He found that there were other teachers just like him that wanted to light a fire in his students for reading. Now, three years later, teachers in over 500 schools in 40 states are working together via online discussions, monthly chats and newsletters, social media, and even national conference events. These educators are working to ensure that all passionate which who possess the literary skills to choose a path outside and beyond the classroom. They're doing this um, using recently written books by diverse authors about topics that students are interested in because they're seeing themselves within the pages dealing with views that they understand. In the fall of 2018, after finding and learning community, I asked our administrator and Moorhead Junior High applied to become an official Project Lit chapter. We were accepted and joined the <clears throat> movement. We started small and it's taken off. We started with growing our classroom libraries. As of today, we've added 70 new titles to each. These titles have been built by various individuals throughout our community across the nation, including our PTO who helped make this happen. We just hosted our first campus community event. We worked with our campus librarian who ensured that 30 of the 40 Project Lit titles were available at the book fair. Then in conjunction with the book fair, we hosted a book showcase night celebrated in our video, where over 50 of my students and some of my teammates presented about books they've read so far this year. But we've not stopped. We currently have scheduled two Project Lit book clubs in our school library in order to bring students, parents, and community members together to discuss and celebrate a couple of the books from that list. We want you to join us. Not only you, but the entire community. On March 26, 2019, next week, from 4.15 to 5, in our library, we will be discussing All American Boys by Jason Reynolds and Brandon Keeley. <laughs> we want you to join us so much that we brought you a gift. <laughs> I like that. I, mean, I can't, I gotta practice what I preach here. So, um, we've brought you each a copy of the book. We hope a week's long enough to read. Right here, baby. You're right on it. <laughs> we can read it and eat Thank you very much. Absolutely. You Thank you all so much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. President Williams, Dr. Knoll, members of the board, um, it is a great pleasure of mine this evening to talk a little bit about our student council. Um, we at Austin have not had a student council prior to this year, and it is something that we've kind of thrown around, and oh, we need to get a student council put together, and finally, two fine ladies stood up and said, we'll take it on, so I'd like to introduce our student council sponsors, Ms. April Grimes and Ms. Pamela Jackson. <laughs> Good evening, as Dr. Pearson said, my name is April uh, Grimes, this is Pamela Jackson, and I am very honored to be here today with our students, and we felt a need at Austin Elementary to provide our students with the opportunity to become leaders on the campus and future leaders in their community, and our students have stepped up to that challenge, and we are very proud of them. So I'm actually going to hand the mic over to them and let them tell you what we have been doing on our campus right. this year with Student Love Council. Them. My name is <laughs> My name is Clinton Blankenship. Uh, in Student Council this year, we have done the food drive to help our community, the candy grams, 
to um, show kindness to our friends at school and the flag squad to lower and raise the flag and show respect to our country. We also have done the Black History Parade to show that we are all united together as one. My name is Lane Clary, and here at um, Austin Elementary, we were doing a blanket drive for the animal shelters, and we donated about, like, 200 blankets to the animal shelters in our community, and by reusing it in a new way, instead of just throwing them in the garbage. There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Oh my heart! Good job, awesome. I just want to go on record as I almost lost it over there. So those are my babies. Thank you. Y'all did a wonderful job, and just was oh. so. I've got the next piece of the program. Um, it's our pie award, our first recipients from the Caney Creek feeder pattern, and it is with much pleasure that I present this first pie award to Brian and Crystal LaCaz of Cowboy AC and Heating. Um, Brian and Crystal have partnered with Caney Creek Feeder Schools from the time their beautiful daughters were in elementary at Austin Elementary, whoop, whoop, um, until now where both of their daughters are attending Caney Creek High School. Um, they've given financially as well as so much of their time. This is a family that never says no. Crystal has served on the PTO at Austin, Grangerland, Moorhead, and at Caney Creek. Um, as a PTO member and just as a mom, she has organized and volunteered at school events such as um, fall festivals, color runs, parent nights. She shows up at the school to pass out popcorn, ice cream, other treats to the kids. Um, and you will always see Brian at the events um, doing the heavy lifting, as I like to call it, carrying in the coolers and the lights and I don't even know what else, trailers and hay. All kinds of fun stuff our kids need. Um, so Cowboy Air and Heating, um, obviously owned and operated by the Lacazes, has donated auction items for various school fundraisers, as well as given generously as sponsors for school shirts for our students. And that's very important because that gives the students a sense of pride um, that they have a spirit shirt to wear every Friday that they don't have to purchase. Um, in addition to that, they also volunteered to help sponsor the Caney Creek Feeder family shirts, as we call them, and it's for all the staff and the whole feeder pattern. And they not only were a sponsor of that, but Crystal reached out to Dr. Stickler and said, let me just take care of finding the remaining sponsors for you. So that was kind of a load off of him having to try to call around and find sponsors. She took care of all of that. Um, these two people and their family give so much of themselves. They live and work in our community, and they raise their girls here. They love Caney Creek. And they believe in us as administrators, teachers, and staff. She used to work for me. She used to be my secretary, so that's why I'm getting a little emotional. <laughs> we're proud to partner with them, and we're so grateful for their support and their friendship. So to the Lacazes, if y'all could please come up. Yes. You can't do that to me because I'm a social crier. So, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, a very wise man once told me that strong communities are built on pillars of schools, strong faith communities, and strong business community. And um, being members of the Caney Creek community, I think you really understand understand that, and we really appreciate you joining those two things and bringing your family, your community uh, sense of, of family there your business and the schools all together to make the Caney Creek area just a better place to live. And on behalf of the board, we want to say thank you for all that you do for our students, for our teachers, for the entire community. And we have a Patron Influencing Education Award for you here. And because it is a pie award, these 
flights come with their very own pie. And, and, and I won't say that you have to share it with her. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for all that you do. Appreciate all you do, man. Thank you. I have a fork if you'd like to share. Oh, well, I, I brought my own fork, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, you. Thanks for all you do. Oh, okay. All right. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Noll. It is my distinct honor to present our second Patron in Education Award to Mr. Matt Baker from Baker Signs to you this evening. Mr. Baker and his family have been residents in our community since 1993. In fact, Matt and his brothers attended the original Ben Milam Elementary, <laughs> Creighton Intermediate, Moorhead Junior High, and Caney Creek High School. Baker Sign started in 1984 as a family-owned business with Matt's father building the company's first truck in their front yard. And for the past 35 years, it has grown under Matt's leadership to a very successful company that is known throughout our area, the Houston area, and serves clients across the USA. Mr. Baker not only believes in a solid work ethic, but he also believes in supporting his community. I first came to know Matt through his daughter, Brooklyn, who's with us here tonight, who attended Creighton Elementary several years ago. He was always supportive of not only Brooklyn, but of her classmates, too. Anytime we had a book fair, Matt would send extra money to ensure every kid in the class had an opportunity to buy a book. We would often see him delivering boxes of pizza for the whole grade level, just because he wanted to. Mr. Baker is the reason why Creighton Elementary has the awesome marquee sign it has standing today. His signage company has designed, made, delivered, installed classroom signs at Creighton Elementary and supported us when we initiated the Leader in Me program by making the signage for our main hallways. Baker Signs has continued to make signs and banners for us throughout the years. Every support provided is generously donated by Baker Signs. This year, Mr. Baker has expanded his community outreach by inviting Caney Creek High School students from their construction and welding classes to come on site to see firsthand how a signage company operates and to broaden our students' future work possibilities. Mr. Baker is always looking for ways to give back to schools and his community. He leads with faith, purpose, a servant's heart, and possibility thinking. Thank you, Matt, for making everything you have done for us. You have and are making a positive difference in our schools and community. Again, on behalf of the board, we'd just like to say thank you. It, it's one thing when we have strong parents who are invested in their own children's lives, but when they go above and beyond and they invest in the lives of other children to make those students' lives better, buying books, providing educational opportunities outside the classroom, that is so far above and beyond the call of duty that words just can't even express how much we appreciate, appreciate all those um, opportunities that you're providing to the entire community out there. So again, on behalf of the board, we say thank you very much. Don't leave that. 
being in the way. Thanks, Rob. Thank you, sir. I gotta go. I got the thing. I gotta go. That was a definitive. That was a definitive. Not a I did it with President Williams, Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll, on behalf of the students, the staff, and the families of the Caney Creek Feeder Zone, I'd like to thank you all for your continued support of our schools. We appreciate you taking the time out of your schedules to visit all of our campuses, and we appreciate your continued support of our academic programs, our fine arts programs, and our athletic programs. Uh, thank you again for allowing us the time this evening to showcase just a few of the great things going on in the Caney Creek Feeder Zone. Um, Dr. Dr. Stickler and um, the, the Caney Creek Feeder family, you guys, you, the culture, the, 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 the air of family that you guys exude is just, is just amazing. It, it's truly real, and uh, we really appreciate it. Outstanding presentation. We know you guys are going through some tough times right now, and our prayers are with you. Um, we just ask you guys continue to be strong and reach out to us for anything you guys could possibly need. And, uh, again, just thank you for all that you do. We're very extremely proud of you guys. Um, I know sometimes we don't get out there as much as we should, but trust me, you guys are never forgotten. You guys always do an outstanding job of representing CISD to the fullest. So appreciate that. And uh, again, thanks everybody. The family continues uh, representation on CI for CISD in the most positive light. So kudos to you guys. Did you guys have anything? I'd just like to say the evidence of our future is very secure with youth like we've seen tonight. An example, examples of, of leadership that we've seen from uh, your staff and from yourselves. Our, our future is very safe here at CISD. Thank you. Absolutely. So, Thanks again. Now, we, we, we truly appreciate the gift, so our gift in return to you is to allow you guys to try to get on out of here. You don't have to. We have to endure anymore. But please feel free to stay if you like. <laughs> Now's your time. Um, Congratulations. That's the corner. I watch the business. Congratulations, man. Congratulations, y'all, for your support. Thanks for being here. Best of luck. All right? Yes, sir. Congratulations, man. Austin, I'm there you go. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Item um, 2C, citizen participation. Ms. Godfrey, has anyone registered to address the board? Yes. Okay. All right. The next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance to board policy BED. Please remember, that, please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if the resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as properly post as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have, those who have, who have registered uh, to address the board will be limited to five minutes per, per presentation, for their presentation. Delegations of more than five must appoint a representative to present their views to the board. Ms. Goffrey, 
Please call the first person who signed up to address the board. Christy Swoboda. President Williams, board members, and Dr. Nall. My name is Christy Swoboda. I'm a paraprofessional with the district, and I'm here tonight to speak with you again about paraprofessional pay. Starting pay for teachers in CISD is $53,700. Starting pay for a paraprofessional is $16,292 or $16,882 for a special education paraprofessional. This is less than one-third the starting pay for teachers. While I understand that paras are not certified by the state, less than one-third the pay for the work we do is not right. There's a special ed para in the district with over 30 years of service who's getting paid less than $25,000 a year. Two years ago, I spoke to you about paraprofessionals that don't even check their bank accounts because they clear so little. I was shocked to hear this, but I was clearing almost $15,000 at the time, and while that seemed low to me, it wasn't not checking your bank account low. Unfortunately, my husband's company ceased offering health insurance in December 2017. I was grateful to be able to have the access to the district insurance, and we signed up. I was anxious to see how it affected my paycheck, but I was shocked at what followed. Since January was a one-paycheck month, but a whole paycheck insurance premium, I received $0 paychecks until March 1st, when it was $15. That's when I became a don't-check-the-bank-account employee, because $90 a paycheck is about normal. I put this out of my mind until it came time to print off my W-2, which is right here. Even though I'm married, I claim single, no dependents, so that we don't have to write Uncle Sam a check in April. I almost went into an AFib episode when I saw that only $17.60 had been withheld. Surely there must be a problem with payroll. That was about one-tenth of what I expected it to be. Then I looked at how much I made last year. $2,741.03. How could I have possibly worked 183 days and only made that much? Box 12A told this tale, $17,897 for family health and vision insurance premiums. Thankfully, my husband is employed and we don't depend on my salary to pay bills. But how can a single mom make ends meet on what is left over even paying $478 a month less. In short, they can't. You may be thinking, why should we pay someone who's just an extra body in a classroom more than $11.87 an hour? Well, you shouldn't. But paraprofessionals in this district are much more than that. We pull students for small groups to instruct them on things they miss in the classroom. We work one-on-one -on -one with students who are struggling. We help substitute teachers know the classroom dynamic when they come in. Some are running computer labs for entire elementary schools, teaching every student how to navigate in an ever-changing computer-dependent society, choosing programs and coordinating with teachers. Some are in PE classes working with the students and helping teachers with grades and conduct participation grades. Some with students in the autism program, helping them navigate and regulate their responses to things happening around them. Some, like me, are charged with pulling at-risk students to fill gaps in their learning, attending campus meetings on their progress, and helping make decisions on who needs to continue and who is ready to leave the program. Some, also like me, sponsor clubs in their school, coming up with activities and supplies to encourage students to practice something that they're passionate about. All the while, we're also covering morning, afternoon, and lunch duties. I work with paraprofessionals who've completed their college degree but feel called to work in this role. I have my associate's degree but have gone back to school after years because three times the pay is a great motivator. But shouldn't the district compensate people like me who love what we do now? Working with students on a day-to-day -day basis without being a classroom with something approaching a living wage after insurance. Our title has professional in it. Please consider increasing our pay to reflect that. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Yalit. <laughs> 
President Williams, trustees, my name is Eric Yalik, and I'm nothing but a private citizen. I signed up today and I said that I wanted to talk about discussion, and that is precisely the topic that I'd like to discuss with you, although I understand you can't talk back to me. But we heard a definition earlier tonight from Mr. Kidd, Trustee Kidd, of what debate is. We don't need debate in the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees, but we do need discussion. And I have three concerns that I'd like to express to you that I think are structural impediments to discussion by this board. First of all, you have in your actual board policy for citizen participation a statement, citizens may address the board on matters other than the performance of any staff or board member. You're a political body. You should have the gumption and the courage to sit and listen to citizens who may want to criticize you directly, even by name. You're an elected official, and every citizen should have the right to do that, and quite frankly, what it does is it encourages robust discussion by the board. Second of all, I know you have an agenda item tonight concerning your board member code of conduct. I believe that code of conduct directly violates the Texas Education Code because it does two things. Number one, it limits the access of board members to information. And number two, it limits the access or the ability of board members to have open and direct discussions with staff of the Conroe Independent School District. I hope that the entire Board of Trustees will follow Trustee Inman's example, tear up your code of conduct, and stop following it. There's no reason, though. That doesn't mean that you need to descend into ugly name-calling, debate, or anything like that. You just need to follow your duty under the Education Code to oversee and manage the operations of this school district. The final thing I want to talk to you about, and this is, I'm sorry, Ms. Gladys, it's going to make you a little bit uncomfortable. By the way, it's really nice to see you. Um, is your executive sessions. I, I think there are two problems with the way that this board conducts executive sessions. First of all, under the Open Meetings Act, or at least what's left of it after the Court of Criminal Appeals, the Open Meetings Act requires that there be notice of the specific topic about what you are going to talk about in executive session. When you just put in the notice, you're going to be discussing Chapter 551 and then a section saying discussion with attorney or discussion about real estate. That is insufficient notice under the Act. There are attorney general opinions, and there's actually case law from several courts of appeals that specifically address that issue. But the second problem, and this is where it's a little bit more controversial, the fact that I even know this, is that I believe that this board engages in deliberation in executive sessions. Executive sessions clearly under the statute have the purpose of providing or allowing you to obtain information in a setting that is not in the public. For example, if you're going to be considering a real estate transaction, then it's entirely appropriate for you to do that in privacy in an executive session under the statute. But what is not appropriate is for you to engage in debate, discussion, or deliberation. And unfortunately, and I've heard this actually now from two different, excuse me, from two different board members, that there is discussion and debate going on in executive sessions. That should be done in the open so that the public can see what you're doing. And if we want later to provide citizen comments to this board. I really do want to thank you for what you do. I don't have any doubt that the members of this Board of Trustees are dedicated to public education, and that is certainly part of your duty after you take the oath of office as a trustee of this board. But I do think that you need to really take a hard look at the fact that this board clearly does not engage, and I'm not saying it needs to be the debate that Mr. Kidd talked about. This board needs to engage in public discussion so that the public can see exactly what it is that you're thinking about and doing to set the direction of this district. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Ms. Scott. All right. 
All right, with that being said, that's uh, consent agenda, item number three on the agenda. Gentlemen, I had no one request that we remove anything. Your acceptance of consent agenda is presented. I second the motion. motion. A motion, I have a second. Discussion, hearing none, all in favor? Okay, motion carries. <laughs> all right, <clears throat> let's go to Agenda item four, <clears throat> curriculum and instruction, Dr. Rowe. Yeah, at this time I'll ask Dr. Edith Upshaw to come forward and present this item. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. Our committee today comes to you uh, for the recommendation of the adoption of our instructional materials as listed in the Proclamation 2019. Our 2018 and 2019 Instructional Materials Committee, which some members are here present, present, completed its review of the instructional materials designed by the Texas Education Agency in Proclamation 2019 for adoption and use for our teachers and our students in the school district. This proclamation contains the adoption of instructional materials for English language arts in reading for grades K through eight, Spanish language arts in reading for grades K through six, spelling for English and Spanish for grades one through six, and handwriting in English and Spanish for grades K through five, and English learner's language arts for grades seven through eight, and per personal financial literacy. So the Instructional Materials Committee and subcommittees evaluated these materials during the year-long process review that we submitted to you back in October. And these materials were additionally displayed at our district textbook warehouse for public view and comment through December and January. And committee members considered evaluations also submitted by all our teachers that teach these contents and uh, grade levels in our district. So after several meetings um, from the committee, we voted on the materials that are listed in the attachment that you have before you. And we use funds for this to be able to purchase these items using our district instructional materials allotment. So we come to you today with uh, questions and a recommendation of approval. You're looking for questions from us. Yes, so yes, if you have questions. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Do you have a packet? I'm sorry? She said there was a packet that we had? It's in the board book. It's in the board book. Okay, okay. okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was already in board. Gentlemen, did you have any questions? Hearing none, I'll entertain. I don't have any questions. I make, make a motion. Did Second. You? No, I said I, I don't. We, I checked it out on online. It looked, looks good. I mean, and, and I, I know your process. We've been through this a couple of times mm -hmm. now, so it's... it's uh, Actually, let's have a motion first before we talk yeah. about So we have a motion, motion. second. Um, discussion. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. I'm out of order. Out of no order. problem. I would. No, but I, I understand the process. It's, 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 a, it's a very grueling and diligent process that you guys go through. Um, I know you discussed a little bit of the guidelines, but could you talk a little bit about your guidelines, what you're looking for, what you're not looking for when you go through this process? Absolutely. So one of the things when we look at the process, obviously anything that's listed that we take for approval in our district uh, does have an alignment with our Texas Essential Standards, which is our responsibility to be able to teach in school. We also look at this several learners, and if the information that is provided for us gives us an opportunity to differentiate instruction for our various learners in schools, and gives teachers that variety to be able to implement that instruction. Okay, very good. So on that same note, so for the because we use the TES, every once in a while we'll get questions, or I'll, I'll get questions about uh, Common Core. You know, is Common mm -hmm. Core coming into the school district? How do you keep Common Core out? Things of that nature. I know that as a school district, we have not adopted the Common Core. But could you address that just a little bit? So um, our responsibility for our department is to know the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills, which are TEKS. So that is all we look at and review and consider, because great. that is our curriculum that we have in our state. And anything listed for us to even consider to be adopted and reviewed by the committee is aligned to our Texas Essential Standards. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. i just say I got had an opportunity to witness the process with the teacher input on a couple yes. of different campuses. Uh -huh. And it was very thorough. I was watching ELA teachers on elementary campuses pouring over this stuff awesome. and talking with principals and talking with literacy coaches and asking questions and talking with their team about what they could do with this material over there. So um, I applaud you for that, have getting that input and that, that level of input. And I applaud our teachers for taking it that seriously as well. Absolutely. Thank you. I agree. I'd like to echo that. You guys are truly outstanding at what you do, and you make our jobs 
very easy. Yeah. And my wife will tell you quickly. I'm not in education, but I know I'm in good hands. So you guys have done a fantastic job. So we have a motion to second discussion. We're good. All right, all in favor? Motion carries. If you Thank don't you. mind, I'd like to recommend, uh, I'd like to recognize our committee members oh, and absolutely. our leaders that lead that process. Thank you very much. If, if, you did, yes. if you're in our district textbook committee for this year, can you please stand um, to be recognized? They lead this process that was discussed in their schools, and they spent several nights with us huh. going through these materials to make sure we made those best decisions for our teachers in the classroom. And also, we have our leaders here present that lead this process behind the scenes, too. If you don't mind, I'd like to recommend them. Obviously, um, our superintendents, Dr. Chris Hines and um, Dr. Debbie Phillips, and also Mr. Greg Colshin and Dr. Shelley Winkler help us behind the scenes with this. We also have Mrs. Terry Ross, our director of information systems. She makes every make sure everything works behind the scenes uh, with our technology alignment. Ms. Jepilyn Mathis, our ELA and early childhood coordinator. Y'all, y'all stand. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Darren Carlisle, our bilingual ESL coordinator. Mrs. Debbie McNeely, our uh, secondary language arts coordinator at Woodruff, which is a social studies coordinator. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Upshaw. Outstanding job once again. Um, item five on the agenda, administration. Um, Item 15A, consider approval of mascot school color and school colors for Sushma Elementary. Dr. All right. No. It's an exciting night. As Dr. Phillips makes her way to the podium, I want to introduce some celebrities in the room tonight. Yeah. Mr. David and Mrs. Cherie Suchma are here tonight to see this presentation. Thank you. President Williams, members of the board, Dr. Null, I'm here to present for your consideration the mascot and colors for our new Suchma Elementary School opening this fall. Principal Tara Vandemark sent out a survey to our future families and had around 250 responses submitted. Some of the top choices submitted for the mascot included the Eagles, the Sharks, the Tigers, the Lions, the Egrets, and the, and the Bears. A final ballot was sent out with the top two choices, and the top two choices were the Eagles or the Sharks. After careful consideration, we come to you with the final recommendation. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> the Suchma Eagles, with the school colors being red, white, and blue. We feel this is important because the Suchma family have been such loyal supporters of the Oak Ridge <coughs> Feeder. Suchma is our newest Oak Ridge Feeder school, and we want to bring a little eagle home to roost. If um, there are not any questions, we seek your approval for the Suchma Elementary mascot and color selection. Gentlemen, so moved. Second. <laughs> Motion by um, Trustee Moore, second by Mr. Hudson. Discussion? I recommend we all stand Give the standing open. Yes. <laughs> 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 Mr. Ms. Suchma, can y'all come up? The board would love to shake your hands. Or, <laughs> 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 they want to hear for you. And how are you? You are here tonight. They named the school after Yeah, that's right. Hopefully he's okay. Our fans are able to deal with it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you're good with the Eagle? You're good with the Eagle? Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Love it. I'm sorry. <laughs> We have a motion, second, no discussion. All in favor? I meant to say that was our vote, our standard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to get it on the record. I just didn't get it all out. All right. So unanimous. Awesome. Passes. Motion carries. Um, item 5B, select order. Or I'm contracting as the procurement method for the 2019 Summer Kitchen Renovations Project. Dr. No. Yes. This time we'll ask too much Foster to, to come forward. Present the slide. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. It's my pleasure to bring forward 
this item for your approval tonight, and it's, it's, it's two items in one, so it's important to note it's the selection of the job order contracting method as the, as the uh, contracting method for this work, and then selecting GTT as the contractor to perform this work. So uh, we're asking you for the approval of this method and procedure and the contractor selection for the 2019 kitchen renovations projects. These renovations will replace equipment and serving lines that have reached the end of their life at two campuses, uh, Powell Elementary and Wright Elementary. It's very well aligned to the same project we did in 2018. So it's just a continuation of that same, uh, same work that we've been working with our child nutrition, child nutrition department. The estimated purchase for the project is $744,481. And at this time, we request your approval. Uh, can I get a motion, gentlemen? So move. Second. A motion, second, discussion? Yeah, I have one question. Go ahead, Go sir. Ahead. Mr. Husband? The money for this is coming out of Child Nutrition? Yes, this is funded from Child Nutrition. Thank you. Mr. Oh. Mr. Hubert? Yeah, so um, on going through, just very quickly, uh, on going through the selection, how did you come up with the determination of this, coming to us with this recommendation? Well, we've, uh, about, about almost four years ago, we worked with our purchasing department for a uh, job order contracting method to create a pool of contractors <coughs> basically on call for these small projects. So that's where the contracting method came from. And then using that, we selected the GTT as uh, one of the pools. This is the same contractor who did the same work for us last summer successfully. So we've asked them to do the same thing again. They priced it in the same method. And then we're bringing forward for your approval. Okay, further discussion? All right, motion second. All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, uh, Foster. All right, item uh, 5C, receive capital <coughs> approval update, Dr. All right, Mr. Foster. At this time, I'd like to take the opportunity to bring you up to speed for our capital improvements that we have underway throughout the district. And I'm going to start with the new Suchma Elementary, mm -hmm. which are now Suchma Eagles. Suchma Eagles. So uh, the good news here is, is the work we've been doing to overcome the rain that we've had in, in this uh, this past several months as, as we've reached what we're very near that tipping point I've been talking about. So you can see from our aerial photographer here, the, the paving on the site is, is essentially done. So we're waiting on a connection with the county at Firehouse Lane on the, the top part of the picture. Uh, the Firehouse Lane was, uh, I believe, through county chemistry school <coughs> today. So the construction on that project should start in the very near future to tie into our bus loop driveway. You can see from the picture here, we're also beginning the roof part, uh, which is on the gym, the north part of the picture. Uh, so that roof is coming across the building like we would normally anticipate it doing. The entire roof deck is in. Now the masonry contractor is working to, to bring the whole building into that dry condition that, that we talk about so often as the next milestone for us to meet. On the outside of that building, you see the work around the front door. The, the life of that building is beginning to take shape. On the inside, you're beginning to see the finishes and the things, the attitude, the personality of that building start to come to life. This is a picture of the inside of the gymnasium. Uh, and we've begin, begun the finished color installation. So the ceramic tile, the bathrooms, the restrooms, all those hard surfaces uh, are, are already well <laughs> underway, as you can see from the picture here. We're happy to report the project is on schedule at this point. Scheduled to open in August of 2019 so for this coming school year. At Austin Elementary, where we're doing a building addition to remove the oldest portion of that building from service as they've reached the end of their useful life. Uh, much is the same as Suchma. The crews are working to overcome the rain we've had over the last several months. And much like Suchma, we've reached that, that point where we're beginning that tipping point. The entire roof deck is in. The roof is going on, as you can see, the large, shiny black area and the lower portion of the new section of the building. That building is scheduled to open in 2019 as well. The work over the summer will be actually to remove the, uh, the <coughs> original portions of that building from service and create the new front yard, new new parking areas over the summer for the new campus. Just like Suchma, on the inside, the building finishes are beginning to take their shape, so the corridors and the systems and all the other other, system, uh, other equipment are in place and putting together, and the common area, the new cafeteria, the serving area, which is uh, to separate the gym uh, from the serving area, which is what we like to do at our, is well underway. This proceeding is on schedule. Now, at Stockton Junior High School, this is scheduled to open in August of 2020. It is on schedule just like we would anticipate a project of this magnitude. The building structure is there. You can see the second floor deck on the classroom wings is much in progress currently. The roof deck follows that up. The roofing has already started on the north end of this picture. Uh, so you can see that project is becoming uh, more and more uh, 
closed in uh, every day. On the, the building attitude, its shape, its structure, you'd be able to see the front door, you can see the inside. Uh, the major equipment that won't fit through the typical door uh, has already been set and all that stuff's in place, so it is, it is right where we would anticipate it being at this point in the construction. Like I said, it is on schedule, uh, scheduled to open in August of 2020. At Conroe High School, the building addition, which is done, or now we're talking about the renovations of the main campus, uh, the second floor of the main building is where we're working currently. We've been clearing out uh, the walls and the demo, doing lots of demolition and cleaning up systems over the last couple of months. Now we're at a point where we're starting to put those uh, classrooms and everything back together in their new state. So you can see from this picture, the floor is clear. Now we're starting to put the systems back in place above the ceilings. And on both sections, because there's an old 63 model and then a new building addition, I say new, it's an old building addition, but those are both the two areas we work on on the second floor. Work on the second floor continues through the summer. When we get to summer, we'll start work on the ground floor, and then we're, we anticipate being in that campus uh, through December of 2019. Now, our life cycle project, which I approved uh, earlier this year, uh, is underway now, so we've been working at nights and on weekends and the off hours. This is a picture of the re-roof that's in progress at Hauser Elementary. That project is going just as we would planned it to. It is on schedule and proceeding without issue. We're also at Giesinger Elementary, replacing the roof there. Uh, that project is also progressing just as we would planned it to and is going uh, just, as we'd, uh, just as we anticipated. Overall, we'll be on the life cycle project through the summer and we'll touch <clears> in some portion uh, of some amount of scope of work, 19 campuses between now and the end of August. And that is our update. Mr. Foster, a yes. couple quick questions. Um, I like hearing that everything is on schedule. Uh, my, my question is, is that obviously before any of these projects were started, you came to us with a budget, we approved the budget. Is the budget on schedule as well? Are you, are you, uh, is everything seem to be Budget-wise, what we've allotted for this, how is that coming? Uh, the budgets are are, are are alive and well. I mean, they're, they're I nobody I may not running out of money, so to speak. Um, we're we're looking at uh, our plans with both the contractors, both at Austin and and at uh, Suchma, because we we are always concerned about how we're going to overcome any obstacles we haven't seen yet. So we still got lots of uh, lots of weather ahead of us. We're right. going to enter a hurricane season before we open these buildings again. So we're constantly talking to them about it. We've preserved our uh, owners and contractors' contingency amounts to, to, a, to a level that we feel confident that if we end up in an acceleration point because of some other unforeseen item, that we'll be able to accomplish those tasks without coming back for a request for additional money. So the, the budgets for those campuses both are intact and socked as well. But we haven't had any frustrations or irritation that, that, that there's a problem. Uh, and we we always keep an ear to the ground for other issues with uh, subcontractors or material deliveries or anything like that. But all these jobs have been procured and contracted for a long time, uh, and we haven't encountered anything we haven't uh, foreseen at this point. Because the reason I ask is because this was we're we're paying with for these schools through bond money that we had from the bond in 2014? 2015. 2015, excuse me. And I know that uh, we didn't get bids for that. So after the money was allotted, you get bids, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And we're under so far, so good, is my point. Right. I mean, so, I mean, during the procurement. It's amazing you're uh, yeah. able to do that. Well, I, I, and I appreciate that, but it's it's a team effort. It's not something we do on our own. So, But we work, work with all of our design professionals uh, across all of our projects, and we share our cost data so right. that nobody's in a, in a cubbyhole all by themselves. So we're... Right. We're always uh, collaborating uh, across, even with other districts. So we don't set a budget without. Uh, we're not doing it on our own in a closed door office. We're we're actually engaging other public entities so we know we're in the right ballpark. Absolutely. Thank you. And I'm I'm certain we have enough history. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, so sure we've, I'm sure we. I'm sure we. Really well. It's just nice to know that we're we're at budget or under budget. With what we're with what we're doing, so very yes, good. thank you for that. And a contingency plan in case you have to accelerate—that's even that much better. Absolutely. Well, it seems like just a totally appropriate time to ask, Mr. Foster. Approximately square footage cost per square foot wise. 
approximately from so because I'm asking you a number off the top of your head. Mm -hmm. What was our what was our square foot number in Grando? Talking about for the total cost of construction. Uh, for the construction contract, it was about two sixty five plus or minus some change per square foot. But keep in mind that doesn't have the furniture, the fixtures, the equipment, and all the other stuff that goes along with it. Is that significantly lower than our peers' high schools built at the same time? Um, we were tracking. I mean, and, and it's I hard. Don't know how to use yeah. your names. Right. It, 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 it is very hard to grade apples to apples. But when we did our analysis uh, at the time, we 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 brought before we brought that GMP to you guys for approval. We did compare our square foot numbers to Klein, to Montgomery, uh, to uh, Cy Fair, and to other school districts around us to make sure that we weren't an anomaly somewhere. And we did score favorably dollar for dollar when, when you compare apples to apples against those school districts for that same type of building. Well, I've heard the numbers before, so I want to congratulate you. Even though you didn't actually say a number, I just want to congratulate you on, on holding those budgets because he, he brought it up, but mm -hmm. I just, I, I've just i heard the numbers, and it's, and it's awesome. Well, and, I, I, and we're talking about symmetrical high schools. I mean, we're talking square foot the same, you know, districts mm -hmm. the same, right. whether it's their eighth or our sixth or whatever. I mean, it's uh, it's, it's very, 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 very uh, – it's a blessing to have, have those numbers come in significantly cheap. Uh, I, I want to pass on the, the but credit. Yeah, it's not me. It's, like Grand Oaks. Right. I mean, it's, well, it's, it's, it's certainly there were no corners cut. Either. Yeah. Well, we appreciate that as a, as a team. It's not. I'm not acting all by myself. So there's a lot of people behind me. Trust me. We're aware. I didn't mean to go off point. Good. I didn't go off no, point, but he brought it up. So I. No, you had a good point. Well, I know you've got a great team. Good point. I appreciate that. I've heard some outlandish numbers out there, so I appreciate you clarifying that as well. No. Thank, Thank you, Ethan. As always, found a fantastic job of keeping us on track and on budget and getting those schools open timely. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, all right. Item 6B, <laughs> Business and Finance, consider award for RFP number 18, Custodial Supplies, Doctor. Yes. All right. Darren Rice, come forward, present these next items. Yes, good evening, President Williams, members of the board, Dr. Knoll. Tonight, I'm recommending that the Board of Trustees award RFP 18-12-01 custodial supplies to the nine vendors listed below for an estimated annual expenditure of $990,000. Request for proposals pertaining to the purchase of custodial supplies for the district were <coughs> emailed to 123 vendors through the CISD e-bidding system. 16 vendors submitted a response. The request for proposal was also advertised two times in the Conroe Courier. Unit pricing was, correct, was requested for warehouse and warehouse stock. Those items would be like uh, dust mops, microfiber towels, mop buckets, trash cans, and toilet paper. Um, and we also asked for an, a catalog discount for other items that we might not stock. Uh, line item prices and our discounts will be effective for one year from the time of the award, automatically renewing annually for two additional one-year terms. Best value offers are recommended for board award as noted on the attached tabulation. Funds for the purchases are provided in the general fund. At this time, I recommend your approval. All right, gentlemen, you heard the recommendation. Okay. Move to accept our I'll second the motion. Got a motion, got a second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? All right. Thank you, Mr. Rice. All right, item um, 6B, consider award RFP, employee group health insurance, third party administrator, TPA, <coughs> pharmacy and benefits manager, PBM. Mr. Rice. Thank you. Tonight, it is my honor to represent the Employee Benefits Committee in this very important recommendation to the board. The Employee Benefits Committee is made up of representatives from all district feeder zones, auxiliary departments, and administration. And I would like to ask the members of the committee that are here this evening to stand and be recognized. Please. And I would also like to thank Mr. Skeeter Hubert. He was the board liaison on this project, and his insights were very instrumental in the savings that we're going to discuss here in a moment. Uh, now tell us how you really feel. <laughs> <laughs> so the Employee Benefits Committee is recommending that the Board of Trustees award RFP 18-09-03 Employee Group Health Plan, TPA, and PBM to United Healthcare to provide the medical network, 
Pharmacy Benefits Management, and the Plan Administration for the CISD Self-Funded Insurance Program. The request for proposal was prepared by the CISD Purch Purchasing Department and T. Ross Brown & Associates. He is our insurance consultant. Bid notifications were emailed to 34 vendors through the district's electronic e-bidding system. The proposal was also <coughs> advertised twice in the Conroe Courier. Eight proposals, of which four were to provide PBM services only, and two no bids were received. A nine-member subcommittee of the Employee Benefits Committee was created to perform initial evaluations of all bids received. This committee consisted of employees from Finance, Human Resources, District Administration, Employee Benefits Committee, and Mr. Brown. Members of the subcommittee completed a health plan TPA and PBM evaluation sheet for each bid proposed. Each bid proposal. Bids considered included Aetna, and they use CVS as their PBM since they are now merged. And, and what you will see is all the large healthcare providers have now merged with PBM. So, so you, you, you'll see that theme. <clears throat> uh, United Healthcare with Optum. Blue Cross Blue Shield with Prime Therapeutics for their PBM. We also had a, a third-party administrator called Webb who, who submitted a bid. And we had uh, one uh, PBM services only that is managed by Gallagher uh, Benefits. They're the Texas Education Collective, and they uh, bid with es Express Scripts, and they are actually merged with Cigna. However, Cigna no-bid our plan because they knew they could not compete because they did not have the ACO product that we have uh, currently with Aetna. Um, two finalists, Aetna and United Healthcare, were selected by the subcommittee to make their best and final proposal to the full employee benefits committee. Both vendors submitted their proposal, which included their plan design, expected cost, and their TPA and PBM capabilities. Upon completion of the finalist presentations, United Healthcare was recommended by a unanimous vote of 28 to nothing by the employee benefits committee. Financial savings that will, will be realized were approximately $4.5 million. 2.8 million of this uh, savings will come from the pharmacy side, and 1.7 million of this will come from the TPA and the network side uh, from administrative and net network efficiencies. The term of this agreement is for one year, automatically renewing for four additional one-year terms with an additional option to renew. The contract may be terminated by Conroe ISD at any time. Mr. Terry Brown, the district's health insurance consultant, is here this evening to assist with any questions that the board may have. And at this time, I recommend your approval. All right, gentlemen, uh, can I get a motion? I make the motion that we accept the uh, as accepted as presented. Thank you, sir. Second. All right, discussion. Any questions? So, um, I had, as I, as he said, I was the uh, liaison for the board, and I, I appreciate the opportunity to come. I appreciate the work Mr. Brown did as well. Mm -hmm. He's very, very diligent you. in uh, really pressing the carriers to uh, to come to uh, to us with a with a good number. And what I found interesting, and I had never been in a, in a meeting like that that um, that as as difficult as it is to negotiate health insurance premiums, um, there's typically a, a a tug of war going on between the employer and the employees. And by inviting the employees to be a part of that process is something that I hadn't been a part of in the past, just to hear and make sure that um, the person that's being um, affected the most is actually in the room helping uh, make that decision. But on that same note, um, they're being very diligent to the taxpayers as well because the taxpayers are picking up the majority of that premium as well. So. Hats off to you for, I, I didn't know how you did it before. I didn't. And being through that process and listening to it uh, was very eye-opening for me. So I appreciate your work. And for all of you in the committee, you had 7,000 employees you had in mind as well. And, and uh, you know, Ms. Or Ms. Green did everything you did as well. Thank you for, for your leadership. Well, thanks for your participation as well. Thank you very much. You bet. We appreciate you guys working with Mr. Huber. We really do. <laughs> 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 no, we have a motion second. All in favor, gentlemen? Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you? Oh, did you, did you, did you, you sure? Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. I'm sorry. We have more discussion. I apologize. Go ahead. Terry, I just wanted to ask. Um, I noticed the the scores, and you know anybody that's mm -hmm. anybody that you've had. I mean, they're batting less than a thousand in any health company, right? For right. any size group, for any reason whatsoever. I mean, I was curious how they scored so well on United Healthcare. 
And I'm curious from your experience, I mean, in other words, having not experienced their claim, I mean, they're hearing things, but, you know, the press is cheap. It's the actual delivery of the services that, that where it comes to the rough. And so really what I wanted to hear from you was, do you see a competitiveness in benefit delivery, okay, uh, you know, in the administration of our plan that's it's self insured? Do you see a, it's not just what it costs, it's do you see a, a equivalent or better delivery of services uh, from United? Y yes. As a matter of fact, we, we've got a number of the, of the members who are here uh, during the meeting uh, gave testimonies. <laughs> For uh, a number of them have, have spouses and other family members that are with United, and so they were they were very instrumental. But uh, but, as, and, but as you as you and I know, I mean, there's a lot of difference between you know a fairly good sized company in our area mm -hmm. and our plan. Okay, I mean it's not daylight and dark. I mean, I deal in the health business, right. but I don't have any seven thousand member groups. Okay, right. okay, <laughs> and, and and nor do most benefits specialists, right. with right. the exception of you. Okay, so you deal in those large groups, and there's a lot of difference in United Healthcare that I deal with every day, and the United Healthcare on the administrative level. That's like the difference between Aetna and Aetna administrator. Okay, so I'm just simply asking. They gave them a score, but on what basis did they give them that score? Uh, you know, because we have an experience. You understand what I'm asking? Give somebody a score on on. Uh, I can't remember the exact line item, but it was a, it was a higher score than Aetna. Right. And and like I said, you would expect that because, you know, uh, that that other companies had to deliver it for at 20, least fifteen yeah, years. I can't even remember years. how long we've had them. Twenty years. You know. Yeah. It, it, maybe I can I can address that question. Uh, we did do reference checks, and we did do other school districts who have united. Uh, Tiffany Matfield, who did a marvelous job uh, with this process. So I'd like to give her a hand. Thank you very much, Tiffany. Um, we did reference checks. Um, and you know, these we, are other self-insurance plans? Other self-insurance, other, other districts that are, that are and, and they were able to address our concerns that we might have. Uh, we did extensive research with them. Um, you know, we've been with Aetna for over it's almost 20 years, yeah. and uh, change, change is very difficult. It did not come lightly to the committee, but after 20 years, we we hadn't made progress in some of the... If you look at the numbers, the financial numbers that came from very close bids, both right. either, either way, but it came down to service, exactly what you're talking about. The service team that United is proposing is their number one team. Their best service providers that they have that will assist Tiffany and her staff that will assist our employees. So you, that's answered, that's what skewed the. That's what I, skewed I, the I don't have a dog in the fight. Yeah, I just I just wanted to ask right. the question because I didn't see how we were coming up. But reference, <laughs> reference of the other self-directed large plans yes. would yeah. be the answer. Yeah, that I, I, I checked with a number, a number of large districts about it and got sterling reports. But I would also say that uh, just just speaking with with admin with Tiffany and Paula and and Kathy who have dealt with it. There, there has been uh, some dissatisfaction that has grown, and so the feeling is, okay, let's let's give somebody else a shot because we're not satisfied with what's going on where we are. So, thank, thank yeah. you. I mean, okay. I'm, I'm good. You bet. All right. Uh, all in favor? Thank I you. just like to say thank you guys for such yeah, a thorough absolutely. job, thank Mr. You. Rice, Mr. Brown. They're right there. I, I kept hearing Miss Tiffany. Would you still want her to on the spot? Um, Thank, Thank you. you. I don't know who Dr. Sharples, go ahead. Miss <laughs> Green, go ahead. Let's stand up. Hey, Charlie. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Credit, credit, do a great job. All right, let's get at it. Uh, receive, uh, re receive financial reports. That's item uh, 6C. Dr. No, Mr. Rice. All right. Yes, I'm here this evening to present the financial statements for the district for the month of February. Once again, these statements will include our general fund, our debt service fund, our child nutrition and self-funded insurance. The first statement we're looking at this evening is our balance sheet. The balance sheet for the district includes our assets, our liabilities, and our fund balances. Each month, we like to take a look at our cash and investments. And once again, we'll concentrate on our general fund. Uh, we have cash on hand of $500. We have bank deposits of $337,000. We have investments in the state pools of $202 million. 
We have investments with Wood Forest National Bank of a, roughly $121 million. In our longer-term investments who are managed by TCG Investment Advisors, we have $51.2 million for total cash and investments in the general fund of $374.6 million. Taking a look at property tax collections, uh, you can see this year we're right about 96% right where we right where we need to be. Last month we we're a little ahead, this month just a little behind, but I feel very confident that we'll get to our, our percentage collections. Awesome. The next statement we'll look at this evening is our income statement. Our income statement includes our revenues and expenditures. Our revenues are broken down into three categories. That's local and intermediate sources, state program revenues, and federal program revenues. Looking at the detail of our local and intermediate sources, we can see that property taxes is the largest generator of revenues in our general fund and debt service. It's food sales and child nutrition and it's premium contributions in our self-funded insurance. And we can also look at our expenditures uh, year to date by major category for each of the funds. <clears throat> and as you can see in debt service, you'll see that uh, in February we did make a, a debt service payment on the 15th. Projected fund balance, currently we do not have any change in our, our projected increase in our fund balance for the general fund of about $9.1 million. In that increase uh, in child nutrition, we're looking at a projected increase of about $108,000 this year. Our 2015 bond referendum status update, we've currently expended and encumbered $493,889. Uh, we still look like an estimate to complete of about $30.8 million, leaving us with a projected forecast meeting when we're all done with the bond referendum, uh, $524.7 million, and that'll leave us with about $3.7 million worth of contingency. <coughs> uh, Self-funded insurance. Uh, for the year, we've had total revenues of $24.9 million, uh, total expenses of $23.7 million, leaving us uh, revenues over expenses of about $1.3 million. Uh, we st we're still having good participation at our wellness centers, um, averaging about 568 uh, visits per month. Uh, if y'all remember a few years ago, we talked about what our break-even point is. That's about 500 visits. Um, so we're doing well above that. Our investments for the month, uh, par value of our total portfolio was $549 million. Uh, the pools are yielding 2.62%. Our investments with Wood Forest National Bank at 2.65%. Um, TCG Investment Advisors have our longer-term investments are at 1.93%. Uh, our combined portfolio, its WAM, is 31 days at 2.56%. And our benchmark, which is the 90-day T-bill, is yielding 2.4%. Good job. And thank you. Any questions? Outstanding. Mr. Rice. Just a real, real quick question yes, uh, about Wood Forest versus the state pool. Yes. Okay. Sometimes we see one or the other of those balances being higher than the other. Mm -hmm. And I think this time it, the, the actual rate's inverted versus the balance, uh, the bigger balance. Yeah, we're at. And, and I was asking, is there some kind of. <coughs> sure, Wood Forest reaches a point to where. Wood Forest will not take any more of you. our That's funds or, all I or we would be. We asked them to increase it, and they would not. <laughs> Good job, Thank Mr. You. Rice. Is always outstanding. Thank, Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. And team, great job, guys. Appreciate it. You know, always makes us look good. We appreciate that. All right. Um, item 7, legal, board member code of conduct, 7A. Mr. Gladys. Thank you, Dr. Null. Mr. Um, Williams, members of the board, your local board policy, BBF, board member ethics, requires all trustees to promote the best interest of the district as a whole and to follow certain ethical stand team standards set out in the policy BBF are broken down into categories such as honor and conduct, integrity of character, and student-centered focus. Virtually every school district in Texas has a similar policy. I placed a copy of your policy at each of your places. In addition to board policy BBF, most school boards across the country also adopt a code of conduct, a creed, or operating procedures <clears throat> similar to what you have adopted for this board. These documents set forth expectations for the conduct of board members, much as you've set forth codes of conduct for your employees and your students. In 2010, the board began using the current version of the board member code of conduct. The board implemented the practice at <clears throat> the practice of adhering to a code of conduct in 2004, shortly after Dr. Stockton became superintendent. 
In December, the board reaffirmed its commitment to comply with its code of conduct as it is done after every trustee election. Last month, I received notice from Mr. Inman revoking his signature on the board member code of conduct. As a result, this item is on the agenda for your discussion and any necessary action to ensure that the district's records are accurate. If the board would like to discuss the issue, a motion to discuss Mr. Inman's revocation should be made. If no motion is made, the board will just move on to the next agenda item. I would like to move to have a discussion about the code of conduct. I'll second it. Gentlemen, we have a motion second. Let's all in favor. I guess we just, we just need a motion to, not a motion to discuss the motion. Okay, gotcha. All right. Um, Ms. Kidd? Well, as I understand, the, the code of conduct we've been following for some time and has, has worked well, uh, and there are um, 17 uh, items, and I guess what I wanted to have some open discussion about was um, of the particular 17 items, I would like to, uh, you know, address for the, for the benefit of, of moving forward, not just this board, but boards in the future. You know, the, the particular item uh, that the, the board member has issue with, um, I'm looking at number two, board members shall not take individual actions that will compromise the school district, the board, or administration. Board members recognize that they are only authorized to take action in an official capacity as a member of the board as a whole or when delegated authority by the board as a whole. And I guess maybe to try to come to some understanding or even uh, address resolution, um, you know, and, and address update even, if, if, if needed, I was going to just discuss what are, I guess, rather than go through each one, which particular of the 17 is there, at, is there an issue with? As I read the statutory duties of board member, and, and in general, items 1, 4, 7, and 11, as I read it and understand it, there seems to be possible some conflict. And I feel my obligation for me, we're each going to read this differently, have our own perspective, but from my perspective, I believe that to follow the statutory duties of a board member, I'm not sure I can abide by 1, 4, 7, and 11. And I don't know. Does everybody have a... Now, I, I want to I, I just I clarify which one first. are you addressing board policy BBF? Or are you addressing the... I think you have it there. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because we had me those numbers again, gentlemen. One, four. And four. I'm open certainly to any questions as necessary. What, what numbers again? Uh, one, four, seven, and eleven. Speci more seven and eleven than one and four. I'm missing the page. I'm missing page. number eleven, but somebody can read it to us. Yeah. Maybe I can pass it down. So number eleven, as I read it, individual <laughs> board members shall not directly <laughs> communicate with vendors or bidders to the district regarding any school business without the express prior authorization of the board. Am I reading that correctly? That's yes, 11. Sir. Okay. So, um, for instance, I guess, you know, what we earlier about, was it the, the custodian bids or the, the health care? Yeah, the health care even. In in, in, in yeah, I wouldn't just be getting any of those. May I interject at, at this point just on something? For example, uh, I, I have disclosed in the past to Ms. Carey and to others when there is a conflict of interest, uh, uh, you know, uh, that I happen to deal with one of our vendors, just like I'm sure Wood Forest Bank or somebody else has done <clears> in the past, I don't think. But anyway, um, so there are exceptions to that, and they're disclosed openly. Okay, and uh, when uh, when something like that happens, so if, if there's an abstention or something like that, if there's any potential conflict there, and that's required by Texas law, right? I mean, what, what you're describing, Mr. Husbands, I mean, you've fulfilled your duty under the statutes. Okay, to close those, so. but I was just clarifying that there could be an exception to that. I, I just thought it's fair to to bring no. it up. Because exactly. we live in a relatively small community to, compared to some, okay? And you're going to bump heads with people Indeed. that you know, okay? But I guess the, the issue is uh, individual board members directly communicating about school business uh, is, to me, the, 
I guess. Which the, number are you on? 11. 11. Still, Still on 11. So, you know, just to help, uh, because I, I believe that the code of conduct is, is a very important for all of us, not just the board as we sit here today, but for boards in the future and boards in the past. And so I just wanted to get some dialogue as to uh, why wouldn't we agree not to communicate directly with vendors that about school business on an individual basis? As I said, I find one four seven eleven as I read them to conflict with the statutory duties of a board member. Oh, well, and I. But what is eleven? What what besides just that response? I mean, what what are you envisioning that there's there's going to be an issue with? What what? Maybe talk, talking to Robert Marlin, you know, at a Wood Forest and saying something, and then saying, "Well, did I violate eleven or not?" And I, and I think, uh, I don't want to put Ms. Gladys on the spot, but I think the day you gave me this, I had hesitations with it. You did. Indeed, you did. The very first day it was handed to me, I said, I, I read it, and I said, you know, let me look at this. And oh, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. checking my statutory duties yeah. under the law. And if, if everyone says they're comfortable signing it, and they, if you find a spot, I can't find a spot to fulfill my statutory duties and do the code of conduct. No, and I'm I and understand. And your time, and but I, today I can't. I, res I respect what your position is. What I'm trying to do is just get some sort of understanding um, as to the scenario that you're uncomfortable with. Perhaps if he would tell us the statutory duty he's concerned about violating. I, I left him at home. I didn't have time to run by the house together. Mm. But there were several of them that said uh, talking to the community, being in the community, talking to people. If someone were to come up and say, well, here I've got this complaint and X, Y, Z, and I say something on a oh, social media platform, and then it says, oops, did you say this with board approval? Or did you investigate this? Or even on one, board members shall follow board policy. Well, but let's, let's stay on stay on 11 because I'm okay. interested about the statutory basis. What, like what, what text, what statute, what? Of the 17 items, you, there's five things that says to do. There's 12 that says you can't. No, but what I'm asking, what I'm asking is, what is your, what is this, when you say the statutory basis, what particular document, statute, the overseas school district you're relying concerns. On. Right, but I mean, what... And if I'm, for example, I know you want to stay in 11, but for example, number one, it is possible that any one of the seven of us up here, six of us could vote one way and one the other and say, I don't agree with that decision. Well, number one would say, you have to abide by the decision of the board as a whole. What if one of us says, but I don't abide by that decision? I don't agree with it. Agreeing and abiding are two different things. Those are completely separate actions. As I said, one, four, seven, eleven... I'm not no, but I understand, but what, what I'm asking is, like, if I'm relying on a, a case, you know, I go and I pull that case. If I'm relying on the law, I go and pull that law. What is the actual statutory? I don't know the actual number. I'm not a lawyer, but I did read some things that said, as an overseer, you have responsibility over the district individually. It says the board member, not the board members, but it says, or the board, it says the board member shall. And again, I'm not trying to. I'm, I'm just trying no, to I'm not understand. I'm, not, I'm trying to understand what is the what is the article, what is the text. I went online. Uh, I put in board members' uh, duties of a board member prior to my running, and I looked at those things and it said what a board member will do. A board member. And as I read some of these, the first night I had it, I thought I'm going to have to reread some of that stuff because what I read it seems like there could be a potential conflict here. Okay, gentlemen. Let, let's 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 move on for the interest of time. Yeah, I, just one last question. Go ahead. One last. This, uh, so, as I understand what you're saying, is you would be okay with this for you individually if just for your for your code the one four and seven eleven were omitted. Generally, yes. So, so those you are could, the ones that mainly stood out to me. So you could sign sign off if it omitted those four. I would read the other ones more closely. Those are the four that stood out. Okay, Those gentlemen, work. I would ask. But I will say, I'm not going to do anything crazy if that's what you're worried about. Fair enough. I'm, I would ask that the um, that, that the board mem members here recommit to this, if there's a such thing, recommit to the uh, board code of conduct, just to show us all of you, um, that we anticipate fully ad adhering to this as a board. Um, and, and I don't know if that's appropriate or whatnot, but 
You certainly can do that, and then I will file those. Um, Mrs. Godfrey has them. The last page is the signature page, and if you sign that, and yeah, we. Print, I, I think that'd be. I think that'd be an outstanding gesture on behalf. We'll of make sure the minutes reflect that. But if you, if you don't mind, kind of following up with with, with Mr. Kidd, I'm I'm curious where you're going with it because I I have no problem. I have no problem with this at all. I don't believe, I've, I've read this several times, I've spoken with you about this as well, and I don't believe this inhibits me in any way to, f to fulfill my duty. And that's, you know, we have a different opinion, no big deal. Um, but if a board member chooses not to sign this, they're not kicked off the board or anything, yes. right? They're not, there's, there's, there's not a nothing staff statutory. Nope. Nothing, nothing statutory. This is an agreement amongst ourselves on how we are going to conduct ourselves. And, and quite honestly, I've not only at this board, but I've served on other nonprofit boards. And as a nonprofit, we do the same thing. We don't get in the way of the executive director and the hiring, the firing, and the the day to day minutia stuff like that. Doctor, no, I didn't apply for your job. I don't. I don't. I, you know, I I'm not qualified to do to do that job. And so I'm not going to get in the middle of doing your job or anybody else's job. My role is to to oversee and make sure that policies are certainly being followed. And that the budget is being adhered to, and that when when uh, parents approach me, I certainly direct them in the areas that that they need to. But I certainly don't get in the mud with them and and wrestle around and try to figure out the solution until it comes to a level three, which we're hearing some today, which we will all be able to abide. And this does not keep me from from doing that as well. So I, I, I if you I, don't mind, I, I know you want to move on. No, but I think that's a general yet. consensus. My, my question is with Mr. Kidd, I'm just curious where you're going with, with your line of questioning. As well. and, and again, I, just, I, I appreciate that. And I wanted, I'm hoping that I came across respectful and appreciate, you know, I just, I just wanted to get an, an understanding, um, yeah, you know, and I appreciate the differences, but when we're talking about a code of conduct, I just wanted to identify what the issues were and the reason I was asking for what authority that you may be uh, analyzing. I wanted to try to go and do my homework and analyze and do my homework on, on that as well. So I appreciate the differences, but I just wanted you to, you know, to, since this is our time to have some open discussion about it, do that. And I hope, I hope, uh, I look forward to working with you and I hope you saw that in a respectful manner. Absolutely. I look forward to looking at you guys. I want to stress I'm not going to do anything crazy. I just read the duties, I read this, and I did a diagram, and I thought, man, there could be some overlap there. Outstanding. All right, gentlemen, if you will, I would ask each guest, each one of you guys to recommit to the uh, Board Code of Conduct and submit that to uh, Ms. Galanis, Ms. Godfrey, and uh, thank you. All right, item eight, executive session. Dr. No, you have the floor. This meeting of the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees is convened on March 19th, 2019, and the quorum of the board is present. Uh, including Mr. Moore, Mr. Husbands, Mr. Kidd, Mr. Williams, Mr. Hubert, and Mr. Inman. The board will hear the complaint appeal of parent Cortez Davis in accordance with local board policy FNG. This hearing is being recorded. Ms. Davis's complaint is against Mr. James Glaspy, an assistant principal at Conroe High School. This hearing will be held in closed session pursuant to Texas Government Code sections 551.074 and 551.0821. Because this complaint is against a district employee and because personally identifiable information about a public school student could be revealed. This meeting is now adjourned to executive session under Texas Government Codes 551.074 and 551.0821. Everyone not associated with this hearing should leave the room. The board will take no action while in executive session. The time is now 744. All right, the board has now reconvened in open session. The time is 826. The board will now make its decision. The board can uphold the decisions of the level one and level two hearing officers. The board can overturn the hearing officer's decision or the board can grant any relief that they feel is appropriate. Is there a motion? Yes, I would like to uh, make a motion to uphold the findings and the decisions of the level one and level two hearing officers. I second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, the board has upheld the hearing officer's um, decision. Ms. Davis, the district will send you written notice confirming the action taken by the board. And this concludes the hearing. Thank you. Thank you for your own concern.
You're welcome. And letting, us, letting me know and proving that our children are not safe in your schools. Ma'am, thank, thank you. you. Bunch of whitewashing and blackball. <laughs> Where that one, Daedra? <laughs> Off of Mississippi. <laughs> Oh, You've heard worse? No, say it. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Mr. Blasty. Good evening. Good evening, Mrs. Ward. Okay. All right. <laughs> Mrs. Ward, there is um, there's a formality to, to this process. So I know we're gonna we're gonna have a couple of different hearings tonight. You're gonna hear me go through the same formality okay. for each time. So just to let you know, it's just the um, it'll sound repetitive, yeah. truthfully, but um, and by the way, we'll, we'll just go through the same process. So, You see me on that side? You ready? Because I'm asking for it. Um, I want something. Some kids. I do have my boys. Follow that kid. I'm sorry. I'm mean it. Now you're making fun of this too. meeting of the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees is convened on March 19th, 2019. A quorum of the board is present, including the following members, Mr. Moore, Mr. Husbands, Mr. Kidd, Mr. Williams, Mr. Hubert, and Mr. Inman. The board will hear the complaint uh, appeal of parent Patrice Ward in accordance with local board policy FNG. The hearing is being recorded. Mrs. Ward's complaint is against Mr. Larry Klepeski, an assistant principal at the Woodlands High School and the members <coughs> of our daughter's ARD committee. The hearing will be held in closed session pursuant to the Texas Government Code Section 551.074 and 551.0821 because Mrs. Ward's complaint is against district employees and because personally identifiable information about the public school student could be revealed. This meeting is now adjourned to executive session under Texas Government Codes 551.074 and 551.0821. Everyone not associated with this hearing should leave the room. The board will take no action while in executive session. The time is now 8.31. All right, the board has now reconvened in open session. The time is 9.18. The board will now make its decision. The board can uphold the decisions of the level one and level two hearing officers. The board can overturn the hearing officer's decision or the board can grant any relief they feel is appropriate. Is there a motion at this time? At this time, I'd like to make a motion to uphold the decision uh, of the level one and level two hearing officers. Is there a second? I second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? At this time, the board has um, made the decision to <coughs> uphold the level one and level two hearing officers. Ms. Ward, you will receive a written notice confirming that action taken by the board. This concludes this hearing. And I know that we have the same parties. We have the same parties that will move into the next. Uh, I have a question, and then I have a question. Okay. The, 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 that's, this hearing is over, so if anybody needs to get a break, now is the appropriate time to do that. I'll try to entertain your question. Yes, ma'am. Is it, um, was there another R committee available? Uh, is there such a thing? No. No. Not in this exactly. situation. <laughs> okay, so then right, I, so I have a request. <laughs> so, Ms. Galatis was saying that, uh, that you are supposed to hear about the swim team one, and I'm asking if that one could be postponed to the next meeting. Were we because I, th I, think, I think that there's... Did we provide notice? Or we did provide notice. I didn't, I'm not familiar with it. 
I'm not familiar with it whatsoever. As I say, I thought that this was supposed to go to another level. I didn't get I didn't get anything about that. Did, you, did I get anything about that? I don't think so. I didn't get anything about the swim team thing. And that, and again, you know, if people aren't familiar, I mean, who is familiar with this OCR letter? Who is familiar with emotional disturbance? And it's like. <clears throat> so this, this complaint was um, staff at the Woodlands High School refused to make. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So at, at this time, um, there's been a request. Miss Ward feels like she was not given notice for the, the second complaint tonight. Um, to and she's not prepared to make her argument in that. <coughs> so, um, President well, Williams, means I, I, we want a fair hearing, so let's postpone it. You know, I concur. Okay. So um, if that's the case, we will postpone that hearing. Let, let me just ask, this is the only level three that we have with Ms. 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 Ward. Can we just consolidate all these level threes? Is, no. is this the only one we have? Presently. Presently. I think there's one in the Solid system that was a level two. Then it's probably filed at a different time. So okay. Can't all right. Well, then let's move Let's move forward. You can have a seat, Ms. Ward. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and move forward to... Um, the hearing regarding the request for interdistrict transfers. Wait a minute, I didn't understand that. Hang on just a second. Yes. You're saying no, don't give her a delay? No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying yeah, is. if you come, if, I'm saying go ahead and delay it. That's fine. But if she's going to have, we have other ones, let's just get them all out the way, you know. But uh, it's at a level, level two right now. We, she has one more level three well, tonight. Right? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I don't there were it, three. I think this yes. is okay, the, level three. Yes. This is what the conversation I had yes. with her. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Yeah, there, there are three. Confused. There were nine. Yeah, there three. I, I guess I just lost yeah, What's the second one? The second one is a swim. Swimming. We're, That's we're what we're going to postpone. And now right. we're now we are moving to transfer. Into, Will you prepare for that one? Yes. And now we're moving into which one? Right, right. but as I say, I'm not sure okay. why it gets escalated to a level three when I had the conversation with her on the phone yesterday. Because, see, last year I had a meeting oh, with Greg Colson at a level one. For a request for a transfer but last year and then she tells me on the phone yesterday that apparently anybody that requests for a transfer or appeals a denial of a request for transfer it's got to go in front of a board yeah so, the, so as, a, I, as a matter what you of did board, last year was wrong what you're doing this year is wrong that's that's not at all true what, what that? Year was, tell us what, what, yeah, yeah. so what was done last year was within the policy but when there is an appeal beyond if there's a denial by board policy, if there's a denial of an interdistrict transfer, the final appeal is to come to the board. Oh, and yeah. so that's why this is And that's here. what was on our... Yes, and so, yes right here. So I'm going to move forward. Ms. Ford, you can have a seat. I'm going to move forward now, yeah. and we're going to conduct this... But wait, this sir, but there I'm, hasn't been a level one appeal. I, I'm going to move forward. There hasn't been it, any kind of thing like that. <laughs> <laughs> request for a transfer, it got denied. It's supposed to go to a level one, isn't it? But I'm not if, if they're. Yeah. I'm not, we're going to move forward. Just, just. Did it change? This meeting, meeting of the Conroe. That's the way it went last year. This meeting of the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees is convened on March 19th, 2019. The quorum is present, including the following members Mr. Moore, Mr. Husbands, Mr. Kidd, Mr. Williams, Mr. Hubert, and Mr. Inman. The item for consideration of a petition requesting an interdistrict transfer for two students from the College Park High School and Knox Junior High School to the Woodlands High School and McCullough Junior High. The matter is considered pursuant to CISD Board Policy FDB and will be heard in closed session. Any decision of the board will be made in open session. The time is now 9.28. The board will go into closed session as authorized by Texas Government Code Section 551.0821 as a matter involves personally identifiable information about public school students Anyone not involved in this matter should leave the room now. You got you. All right, the time is now 1021, and the board has returned to open session, um, having completed deliberations and no action taken in closed session. Is there a motion at this time? Yes, at this time I make a motion to deny the appeal. I second the motion. All, right. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. At this time, that will conclude the hearing, and the um, we will mail um, final decision to Mr. Ward. Very good. All right, Mr. President. 
All right. Ball's back in your court for you. Uh, the board is now in open session. The time is 10.22 p.m. The next item on the agenda, let me find it. Here we go. All right. Um, they go to executive session. <laughs> back in executive session. <laughs> Both of you. Boys. I feel sorry for you. <laughs> Good night, guys. Huh? Good night. Oh, man. A closed session of the board will now be held on matters contained in the notice for the meeting as authorized by Section 551.071, 551.072, and 551.074 of the Texas Open Meeting Act. Should the board determine that a final action, final decision, or final vote, vote be required with regards to any matter considered in such closed or executive session or an executive meeting or session, this such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be either at A, uh, this public meeting upon reconvening of the public meeting, or B, at a subsequent meeting of the board upon notice thereof, as the board shall determine. A closed session of the board will now be held. It's 10.23 p.m. I mean, uh, yeah, all right, thank you. The yeah. board is now in open session at 10.34 p.m. The next item on the agenda is, I guess we're voting on motions. Yeah, you got to call the item, though. All right. Um, yes, I move that the board call the item first. You call all right, it. first item on the agenda, consider purchase of approximately um, 74.46 acres in Caney Creek Feeder Zone. Item E, go ahead. I move that the board approve the purchase of the approximate 7475 acres of land located in the Caney Creek feeder zone under the terms and conditions discussed and also authorize the superintendent to negotiate and execute the contract necessary to this. have a motion. Do I have a second, gentlemen? Second. Got a motion, second. Discussion? All in favor? All right. Thank you, sir. Gentlemen, um, item passes unanimously. unanimously. Something like that. Um, item 10F, consider purchase of approximately 39 acres site in Conroe High School feeder zone. I have a motion. All right, I got a motion. I move that the board approve the purchase of approximately 39 acres of land located in the Conroe feeder zone under the terms and conditions discussed and authorize the superintendent to negotiate and execute the contract and any other documents necessary to effectuate the purpose. Purchase. Second. Uh, motion, Mr. Husman. Second, Mr. Moore. No. Discussion? All in favor? Motion passes. All right, proposed termination, I'm sorry, item 10G, proposed termination for good cause and authorized notice proposing termination of probationary employment contract of Mr. Richard Chimelier. Chim I have a motion. I move that the board propose the termination of the probationary contract of Richard Chiamulera for good cause and further move that the board authorize the superintendent to provide Mr. Chiamulera with notice of this action. We have a motion? Second. We have a second, gentlemen. Any discussion? All right. All in favor? Passes. Unanimously. All right. Um, gentlemen, motion to dis close or adjourn? Move. Got a motion to adjourn? All discussion. in favor? All right. <laughs> the date is now. <laughs>